Hey guys, I want to do a special video on the Kelly Criterion um, because it's become very clear to me that people, with the exception of Stephen Perrineau and Giovanni and a few others, a lot of people just don't understand this Kelly Criterion and I think it's really important. Um, so what is it? It's a way of sizing bets uh, for investing or trading or gambling, right? Um, and it was discovered by, in the 50s, by this guy Kelly who worked at Bell Labs. And um, I want to show you a little bit of a uh, little presentation I put on in there just so you can understand um, this thing. It's pretty simple. All right, so let's suppose I have a bet and the bet pays you you start with one dollar and you get B dollars with probability um, W and you get A dollars with probability one minus W, right? So this is sort of your standard bet. Um, now, if it's a normal coin toss, you know, W is equal to half. And in, in our case, we're going to use W equals half. But you're going to get B. Uh, will be a little bit bigger than one, right? And A will be obviously a little, a little less than one, might be even zero, right? Um, and we're going to get A with probability one minus W, right? Now, we're going to say, and you can prove this, that you're going to bet a fraction K of our bankroll every bet, okay? And uh, it's pretty easy to convince yourself of this because there's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't bet the same fraction every time because it's sort of the situation is identical every time you just may have more money or less money. So we're going to bet a fraction K of our bankroll every bet. And um, you can prove, and the proof is not very hard, uh, that the optimal bet K is, uh, the optimal size of K is W over A minus uh, 1 minus W over B, okay? So now it sounds like a lot of math, and um, the proof involves two things. You're going to have to you have to understand the logarithms, and you're going to have to understand how to differentiate logarithms, um, and you're going to understand, have to understand the chain rule. So I'm not going to I'm going to go over the proof. But I'm going to show you a document that, that sort of does go over the proof. It's very simple though. Um, you know, sort of undergrad math calculus class will get you there. Um, anyways. Let's just put this thing in Bitcoin terms, right? In Bitcoin terms, uh, we have something like a power law, which is sort of similar to an exponential function, which let's just say it has a 40% CAGR right now, right? Well, um, what does that mean? That means that a dollar right now should give you a dollar 40 in a year, right? Um, <clears throat> but we have a ton of volatility, right? So we have a half chance of doubling that, say, to 2.8. And then we have a half chance of going 50% below that to 0 0.7, right? So there is, a, there is a half chance that we lose money every year. And there's a half chance that we, that we do, do almost 3x, right? So these are pretty good odds. So in our case, you have 1, we'll go to 2.8 with probability 0 0.5, and 0 0.7 with probability 0 0.5. So basically, I'm just approximating my power law movement, my diffusion, with a binomial, right, a random walk in log space with, um, with a standard deviation of 0 0.3 and a, uh, uh, a mean of 0 point, uh, of 1.4, okay, in, in log space. So, what does that say? Well, and I'm going to show you this, it's roughly going to be 53%, okay, is, is roughly the number. Um, now, let's, let's dive into this a little bit. That may seem a little crazy because what I'm telling you there is, even if you're so bullish, the Kelly Criterion says, do not bet more than 53% of your entire bet on Bitcoin. Kind of crazy because a lot of you guys are, I'm fully committed, I'm all in, etc. So let's just look at how this actually works in practice, okay? And, uh, okay, so let's go here. And now let's look at this. Okay, so this thing here, I basically have this power. Uh, we know that 
the power laws are mm -hmm. roughly a power of 5.6. And, you know, we're in the 15th year, so we can actually measure out the CAGR uh, because it's just one plus the, uh, <clears throat> the year we're in divided by the year we're in to the power. Okay, this is pretty easy to prove. Uh, minus one, right? So that's the CAGR. And we know the standard deviation is around point one zero point three, right? And again, that means that uh, we're going to either double, okay, or we're going to go up 0 0.5. <laughs> that's kind of what this, this volatility level says. And um, what that kind of tells you is you're going to go 1.4 times 2, and that gives you the 2.8. And then 1.4 divided by 2 gives you the 0 0.7, right? So, <clears throat> so now we're using sort of standard W. You go up or down, equal, equal probability in this, uh, in this <coughs> process. Well, you can just plug away, and now you have all the variables. And you get K is equal to 52%. And uh, that's pretty interesting. And that actually, believe it or not, turns out to be very similar to what uh, uh, Stephen Perrineau get. He said annual rebalance will cost for F between 44% and 70%, right? Um, we're getting around 50% right now for this one. Um, so now let's go back to here again. And I just want to show you what this means in practice. Okay, so let's just say we start out at 60,000, right? And that's where we are now. And in a year, we find that we're at 120,000, right? Well, let's suppose that we're using Kelly to kind of you do our thing as opposed to just, first of all, let's look at it, we're just all in, right? And I'm saying we went up 100%, then we went up 120% to 264,000. Then we had a drop, 60,000, we dropped to 105,000, and then we rallied back up 140%. And I picked these numbers here so they would roughly uh, correspond to the CAGR time at the power four, right? So if I look at this CAGR and I, and I say, okay, at, at this 43% CAGR, how much should I expect? Well, I would kind of expect to do about four times my money in four years if I just buy and hold. Well, with this kind of scheme here, you actually do about 4.2 times your money. See, it's about the same, right? Except we have this lot of volatility. So now let's suppose I only, I start with a million dollars, right? But I actually only put $520,000 in Bitcoin. The rest is in cash, right? Because that's the, the K factor from my Kelly, okay? Well, then it goes up. Well, guess what I'm supposed to do? I'm supposed to sell 24% of my Bitcoin because uh, of the Kelly, basically. This is kind of what Kelly's saying. Kelly's saying sell on the way up. Uh, then I sell another 26% here uh, in year two, right? And then in year three, I actually buy 71%. So I'm basically start with eight Bitcoin, um, I have six Bitcoin after a year. I have 4.8 Bitcoin after two years. I have another eight Bitcoin after three years. And I have six Bitcoin after four years, right? So it's a dynamic process of managing my Bitcoin allocation. Uh, and at, you'll notice that at all times, I have 52% of my money, uh, my total stack in, um, in Bitcoin. So as you can see, this... Pretty amazing because you get three times your money and you're never more than 50% in Bitcoin. So you're not all in. So this is kind of the Kelly criterion. There's a lot more we can do with this. We can model it. And I just wanted to get your, your, uh, your, your juices flowing so you understand a little bit here. But um, yeah, I mean, if you're, you're applying Kelly criterion, you're supposed to rebalance. That's kind of what you're supposed to do. And I actually think... These new stock market investors who are going, going to participate in this are going to be rebalancing. They're not just going to buy and hold forever. They will rebalance. Um, they may not rebalance initially because they've taken such small positions.
they may work up to their positions and then rebalance. But I'm not opposed to rebalancing. And actually, you can see here, the percentage of Bitcoin sold could be substantial, right? 20, 30%. So I sort of said it just kind of off the top of my head. I said, listen, I, we get to 200,000, 250,000, I'm rebalancing. I'm selling 30%. Uh, you know, if I was going straight Kelly, I would, I would do more than that, right? Um, because here it would sort of be combined 40, 50% almost really from in, in, this, in this model. I'm not going full Kelly. I'm going kind of more than full Kelly percentage. I, I have a little bit more than 50%. Uh, but I don't think this is a bad way to think of portfolio allocation. And we'll have more. I'm going to encourage my friend Stephen Perinode uh, to jump in with me on this. I think it's going to be a very, very interesting conversation. Uh, and again, uh, I posted this link here, uh, this rebalancing time frame. And, and sort of what, what Stephen was saying in the money or debt uh, thing is, yeah, the more patient you are, right, the more you can have a bigger F, right? And so, you know, if your annual rebound balance, you can hold up to 70%, right? Um, uh, but, you know, you're, you're going to get more, you're going to get more volatility, you're going to get more risk. But anyways, I think this is a good quantitative framework. So I'll let you guys stop and uh, I will share this document uh, on YouTube. Thanks.